we're going to put together the Y axis, the Y assembly. Sometimes I also call it the bed assembly or the build plate assembly. This is what it looks like. The build plate goes right on there. There's two clips holding it in the back and one swiveling clip holding it in front, just like so. We're going to put this together in four or so stages. First, we're going to put the clips on, then we're going to combine the top and the bottom halves, then we're going to put on the bearings and finally attach the belt. And now it's ready to be incorporated into the jelly box later. First, let's attach the clips to the top part of the bed assembly. You're going to need the clips, three clips, the top part of the bed assembly of the, or the Y assembly, five nylon lock nuts and five flathead M3 by eight bolts. By the way, if you ever need to measure screws, note that there's a difference in measuring flathead screws versus regular screws or bolts. When we measure bolts, this is the part. So if I say A3 by M3 by 16, this would be the 16. But if I say M3 by 16 for flathead screw, the whole screw would be the 16 millimeters. It makes sense when you think about it, because for bolts, this is the part that we're interested in that needs to be precise. But for flatheads, since they're countersunk, we need to know the actual size of the whole thing. <laughs> Note that I'm not using any washers here. The clip itself works as a washer, so we don't need them. As always, I tend to first put everything together loosely, and then I'm gonna go around and tighten everything up. In the back, both of the clips are held together with the bed assembly with two bolts, but in the front, it's only one. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Now, when you tighten the front bolt, leave it a little bit loose because it needs to swivel. Yeah, just like that. That's good. As for the back clips, just tighten them normally. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's it for the bed clips. And now we're going to put it together with the bottom part. You're going to need the bottom part of the bed assembly, the top part of the bed assembly, four M3 by 14 flathead screws, four regular M3 washers, and four nylon lock nuts, M3 as well. You'll see that on the top part there is jelly, and on the bottom part there's like a little jar. When you put the jelly sign on top of the jar, that's where you know the two parts are perfectly aligned. Mm -hmm. This time we need to put the M3 washer underneath the nut because there's no clip to distribute the pressure. Mm -hmm. 
random piece of trivia, these four mounting points that uh, hold the top and the bottom together are specifically selected to be also the measuring points for the proximity sensor. This way, if you forget to put the metal plate onto the bed, it, it works as a safety, sort of fail-safe device. And as I'm speaking to you, I forgot to put there one washer, which is OK. Right, there we go. Now it's time to put on the bearings. You're going to need four linear bearings, a bunch of small white four inch zip ties and the rest of the bed assembly. The bearings go on the bottom, so I'm gonna flip it around. But first, as usual, I'm gonna put in all the zip ties. The head of the zip tie should be on the bottom as well, on the bearing, once it's there. <laughs> All right, now let's put the bearings in. As usual, the most efficient way is to do sort of like a manufacturing. So I first put in all the zip ties. Now I'm going to put in all the bearings and just tighten the zip ties loosely with my hand because it's the fastest. And then I'll go around with the vice grip and make everything tight. Now, you want these zip ties tight, but they don't have to be crazy, crazy tight. On the X assembly, as we're putting together, it really made a difference. You want it as tight as possible. Here, just normally tight. You don't have to fret about it. Notice the pumping motion. I always sort of go with the zip tie and then against it. That makes it nice and tight around the bearing. Aha, this may happen to you as well. It's not a big deal. Just put there another one. Obviously cut the excess. We don't need that. There we go. Two more finishing touches. We're going to put two large zip ties 
right here with the head on the bottom as well. Now these are sort of end stops. This will help us see where to put the metal aluminum plate on top so it's in the right position. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> One more finishing touch. The swiveling clip on the front of the bed assembly is quite hard to reach and manipulate. We're going to bend part of the clip a little bit to make it easier to engage. Now, the clip looks sort of like this. This is the swiveling point. What we want to do is to bend this part along this axis, roughly. So sort of crook it just a little bit. I'll take my vice grip. Grip it under the angle and just bend it a bit. Now with the clip bent, I can easily put my finger there and swivel it around. But as you can see, it doesn't swivel all the way because it hits the bed assembly with this little clippy th with this little tab here. So I'm gonna bend the tab as well. Just grab the tab and make it sort of right angle. Now I can swivel it all the way and open all the way. And the last part, as you might have guessed, is to put on the belt. So you're gonna need the white belt, a bunch of small four inch zip ties, the Y assembly, and that's really it. So here's what we're gonna do. When you look at the bed assembly, on the right side there's, there's this contraption right by the jelly jar. That's the belt attachment system. It looks a little bit like this a bit simplified. And there's four holes for four zip ties. So first, we're going to attach the belt right here, and then we're gonna thread it over the valley and attach it with another zip tie right here. So it's gonna be sort of straight over, but it's gonna be loose. So then we're gonna put two more zip ties right here and here to sort of pull the belt in and tension it this way. That's clear. We'll first put in two zip tie loops on the utmost right and utmost left hole on the bed assembly. Leave these loose, don't tighten them. All right, now take the belt and the teeth side out, teeth side facing towards you, which would be away from the bed assembly, thread it through the right loop. And fold the belt in half. The attachment point should be right in the middle of the belt. There we go. And tighten this zip tie as much as you can. If you break it, do it again. This should be a nice secure mount point. There we go. Now put the belt through the other loop over the valley, tighten it a little bit, and make the second zip tight tight as well. And it's the same mantra, make it nice and tight. Now the belt is attached, but if I pull on it from either side, there's a little bit of slack. It moves a little bit back and forth, and we don't like that. And that's why we have two more zip ties in the middle. They put tension between the two mounting points, and it makes it impossible for the belt to slip. And just like with bolts, I want to tighten one a little bit, the other one a little bit, and, and once I exert enough pressure, it's all nice and secure.
One more step in this process, we need to make the belt into an infinite loop so it can wrap around the idler and around the pulley. For that we need a bunch of more zip ties. On the belt, there is a mark on each end. I want to fold the belt into a little loop at the end so that the mark is at its tip. I would say the mark would be the vertex of the loop, if loops have vertices, which I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. The teeth are locked into each other, held together by the zip tie, so it's going nowhere. And to make it the infinite loop, one more zip tie to hold these together. What I want is for the zip tie to start from the top, go down and up again, so that the head of the zip tie is on the upper part of the loop. And I want to make this loop loose. I don't want to tighten it much at all, just gently one, two teeth, clip it in and make the loop as big as possible. That's going to make it easier for you to later incorporate it into the jelly box. With that, we're done with the Y assembly.